Mike Siegel. You know, this house used to be a medical clinic for a logging company, but when leather gurneys and 1920s straitjackets turned up, the home's new owners had to know more about exactly what happened behind closed doors. On the slope of Mount Shasta in McLeod, California, stands a giant, mysterious building. What did you know about the place? Nothing. And the history? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing. And when they bought it, Steve and Beth Clapper never imagined the secrets they'd find hiding inside. This place is enormous. <laughs> How big in square feet are we talking? We think it's 24,000 square feet. The Clappers opened a bed and breakfast in the 1903 Craftsman with plenty of room to spare. They bought the building and its entire contents from a doctor who ran a small clinic here. And it wasn't until they began exploring the long, long corridors that they realized what kinds of creepy things they now own. The building itself was a mystery, and we owned the building before we actually discovered a couple of the rooms that were in it. In an upstairs room, they came across a mystifying device. So when you first saw it, what was your guess about what it was? Well, I had no clue. The mystery deepened as they discovered a room with an incredible array of medical equipment. So guys, this is an amazing collection of stuff. And when I say stuff, it is a lot of stuff. <laughs> we still don't know what it is, most of it. It was filled with leather gurneys, machines, and, well, straight jackets. This I'm familiar with. We found several of assorted sizes. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't know if this happens to be your size or not. Yeah, I know. I like to have it, my custom made. That one's a little <laughs> small for you. An old anesthetic called ether? Giant needles? Ooh. What kind of place was this? Surely it was no small medical clinic. We found a room that was just full of crutches, all assorted sizes from little, small children's crutches to people we couldn't believe could be that tall. And then down in the basement, we found probably 10, 12 bassinets. That's a lot of crutches and a lot of babies. The place was beginning to look like a full-blown hospital that had been abandoned, but why? And then something that didn't fit. The Clappers encountered what looked like a woman's bedroom, but why did she leave this stuff behind? Confused, Beth and Steve continued their search for answers in the supersized attic. We found this box and it said clinical nurses records. So we opened it up thinking that it was going to be records, but actually it was full of magic lantern slides. There were about 400 of the antique slides dating from the early 1900s. Most were medical pictures, but some were scenes of Northern California and San Francisco. Oh, look at that. That's Chinatown. Chinatown. Instead of giving them answers, it raised more questions. So it was a real mystery as to why they had these slides. Beth suspects they belonged to a San Francisco doctor, based on what she found next. They were found in close proximity to these medical textbooks. This one said Robert T. Leggy, San Francisco College of Medicine. And so I contacted the university and spoke with them about who Dr. Leggy was. And what she learned amazed her. Robert Leggy was a pioneer in industrial medicine who got his start here in this building, which was indeed a hospital. It was opened in 1903 by the McLeod River Lumber Company and provided employee benefits unheard of today. The mill worker got free medical service in the hospital. Anything that went wrong with you was free. And you could have your entire family covered for $1 a month. In fact, the entire town of McLeod was built and owned by the lumber company, referred to as Mother McLeod by the townspeople. The whole town was heated from the lumber mill with steam heat. They used to have wooden sidewalks in town, and they ran the steam pipes underneath the sidewalk so they never had snow on the sidewalk. They didn't have to shovel the snow. It just melted away. The town was so efficient, there was hardly a reason to leave. Doctors here were always ready to take out tonsils, deliver babies, or care for the mentally ill. But if this was a hospital, what was that frilly room on the second floor? Beth asked around and finally got an answer. I talked with some people here in town and one gentleman was telling me he's in his 80s and his mother was a nurse here and actually lived in one of these rooms. 
The nurses were imported from out of town to live at the hospital. I wonder if it was tough to get nurses, single nurses, to come up and work up here. I often wondered that too. But then there were a lot of single lumbermen in town, That's so maybe saying. that was a draw. With so many lumbermen in town, no wonder they needed all those crutches. Well, working in the woods is dangerous work. They also needed that mysterious contraption upstairs. I asked some of the old timers, and they said, well, there are a lot of shoulder injuries in the lumber business. And this was your physical therapy. Here, step up there. You just there you do go. this? Yeah, oh. exactly. The hospital shut its doors in 1969 after the lumber mill closed. But the Clappers are now doing their part to keep its past alive. The former delivery room is my kitchen, and the scrub room is our living room, and the surgery is our bedroom. Interesting. That's where you do your operating, huh? <laughs> it's a, That's the old bedroom. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Still to come, a hundred-year-old trunk holds a love story from beyond the grave, and... I thought that there was blood on the ceiling. Is their home linked to the bandit Jesse James? And later, a fascination with firearms. And it exploded. Blows open a mystery. This program brought to you by Dodge. Grab life by the horns. Dodge. The bold style, the confidence, even the way it moves all expected. But you never expected the all-new Dodge Caliber to come with an available chill zone, music gate power, and enough room to make all others respect the unexpected. Now, qualified lessees can lease an all-new Caliber SE for just $1.99 a month. Hurry, before the Memorial Day sales event ends. Come on, all right, well, let the vacation begin. <laughs> Don't get stuck with the wrong hotel. Send in the experts at Hotels.com and get the inside scoop on over 25,000 properties with virtual tours, side-by-side -side comparisons, and even customer reviews. So log on or call now. Get down from there! Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Hallway. Kitchen. Dining room. Here he comes. The right floor makes everybody happy. That's why Lowe's has the widest selection of any national retailer, whether it's tile, hardwood, or carpet. We'll even install it for you. Lowe's, let's build something together. Use your Lowe's card and pay nothing for 12 months on purchases of $299 or more now through May 29th. What's inside Minute Maid Light? There's the fruit. There's the fun. There's the new flavor. Yet it's refreshingly low in calories. Minute Maid Light, light on calories, loaded with taste. Great homes are always in season. House Hunters, weeknights at 7.30 on HGTV. Making room for mom? Property Buzz, an hour of real estate starting with House Hunters, tomorrow at 10 p.m. on HGTV. No one thought twice about the unassuming trunk that had been a decoration in the house for over a century. That is, until one day, its lid was finally pried open to reveal a secret affair. Every summer, Laura Ryden and her family unlock the door to their 140-year-old vacation home in Kennebunk, Maine. Besides gathering winter dust, the federal colonial combo doesn't change much. The only modern things are the toilet, the refrigerator, and the stove, and everything else is pretty much as it was. The home includes a collection that's been piling up since the family bought the place in 1867, including an offbeat medical shock machine. And when you turn this, it would make this noise. And we always thought that was very funny, we always joked about shocking each other. And what you would do is you would press this thing with your foot and you would hold these and you would get shocked for various ailments. What Laura hadn't realized as a child was that the home was like a museum of her own family and that made her want to poke around. One room contained a trunk that had sat undisturbed for who knew how long. And we just kind of ignored it all these years and then I just decided to open it just on impulse. 
Laura dove into the family history and soon discovered who owned the offbeat medical equipment. Her great-great-grandfather, Dr. Lemuel Richards. We have Dr. Richards with his horse, and this is his um, buggy. So he was a true horse and carriage doctor. This is Maggie Richards, my great-grandmother, and this is his wife, Margaret Richards the first. Dr. Richards made house calls and ran an old-time apothecary medicine shop. We actually just recently found this um, notebook. In it, uh, Dr. Richards made notes for how to mix the medicines in his apothecary. Uh, he has a cholera remedy right here. The doctor and his wife had a son and six daughters. One carefully tied her precious letters. And I started to look at the letters. I said, wow, it's, it's addressed to Helen Rich. And that was the third daughter. It was uh, dated Washington, D.C., October 23rd, 1862. And immediately I said, that's the Civil War. And so I got very interested. I said, oh, she must have had a bow in the Civil War. The letter was from a Union soldier. And he addresses it, my dear Helen. Here I am writing by the flickering light of the tallow candle snuck in a bayonet socket. And he signs it, I am as ever yours, John. They seemed destined to marry, but the last letter from John was ominous. It contained a card with the Lord's Prayer. It says, from John to Helen, with affection. I said, wow, I have to find out what happened to him. Laura started researching men named John from Kennebunk, Maine in the 1860s, and that wasn't easy. It took two years of going through the records to find out that his name was actually John Quincy Adams Ford. And with a name like that, discovered that he was a descendant of President John Adams' brother. Laura couldn't believe it, a relative of a president. But what happened to him? Did he marry Helen? There were clues right on the family bookshelf. It was a book of poetry, and on the very first page it says, Helen, and this is in the same handwriting as John's letters. The book was printed in 1873, so John had survived the Civil War. But Laura learned he joined the Navy and went to California. And then he finally arrived back in town in 1875, which at that time I figured, okay, so when are they going to get married? Laura found letters with wedding plans, but the long-suffering couple never made it to the altar. And, and tragedy struck. He died young of a heart attack. John was gone. Helen had waited more than 12 years for her beloved. I think that this is a tragedy because they never were able to realize their love for each other. Laura felt a connection with Helen that blossomed when she found a trunk of her ancestors' clothing, along with her photograph. It was like she was looking back at me in the mirror. And that really was amazing for me. Um, because you, you don't really understand until you see it in your own face what the generations have given you. Up next, was it the scene of a crime? And I thought, oh no, what is that? Or the work of an artist. Plus, she inherited the house. They wanted to give me their house. But moved in to a mystery. When we come back... See how much or how little house you can buy. National Open House. Series premiere tomorrow night at 1030. Part of HGTV's Property Buzz. Chevy Impala SS with active fuel management, which means that a powerful 303 horsepower V8 also gets great highway mileage. Since Impala SS gives you eight cylinders for power and four cylinders for better fuel economy. There's also the security of a five-star frontal crash test rating. The Impala SS, it's a whole new animal. That's an American revolution. I've wanted a tree house my whole life. Hey, I'm serious. I mean, a, a real tree house. Find your perfect place. It's easy at Remax.com. Now Remax.com offers more home listings to choose from than ever before. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. If you're remodeling your kitchen, you can't afford to miss this information. 
It's the information retailers don't want you to see. Prior to joining Direct Buy, we'd already priced out our whole entire house of cabinetry for this project, and it was going to come to a little over $60,000. But when we went back to Direct Buy, it came back with $38,000, and that was everything included. So the savings is uh, almost too, too good to be true. Imagine paying insider prices for items like kitchen cabinets, plumbing fixtures, countertops, and appliances. There's now a way to buy virtually everything you need at prices you never imagined possible. Call the number on your screen now to receive your free insider's guide to buying direct. Plus, you'll also receive a free visitor's pass for an exclusive tour of your local direct buy showroom. Call right now to get started buying the direct buy way. Stop paying retail and become part of Direct Buy, the private members-only showroom and design center. Don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call now. Survivor tip number 175, how to survive an alien abduction. Remain calm. Do not look into the light. Avoid sudden movements. Unless you're driving a new Ford Fusion, they're moving at light speed during the Memorial Day sales event with a lease of just $1.99 a month. Get away quick. And remember, remain calm with the Survivor Tip of the Year. Only during the Memorial Day sales event at your Southern Nevada Ford stores. This Memorial Day, Ashley Furniture Home Store is having an event like no other with totally free financing till June 2011. No interest for five years. Plus, you'll also save an additional 20% on accessories at Allmark Clearance and as is furniture and accessories and more. Look for the coupons in this Sunday's newspaper. Do the math. Coupons plus five years, no interest. You could furnish a bedroom and save enough for a new dining room. But hurry, Memorial Day, it's over. Ashley Furniture Home Store, in style, in reach. Rethink, redesign, and remodel your bath with HGTVBathDesign.com. It's a house that's seen more than its share of investigations. The first focused on a Jesse James holdup. The most recent turned up strange original artwork hidden around the house. When Brian and Sharon Snyder bought this 1840s Greek revival in Independence, Missouri, they couldn't imagine the mysteries hidden inside and, well, outside too. I was doing uh, some painting and sc scraping, you know, on the front of the house. When out popped a piece of putty, it left a perfectly round crater that could only be made by one thing. From some type of bullet. And there wasn't just one. We think the house was hit by quite a few gunshots. Who shot up this grand old home? Brian and Sharon were mystified. Then, unexpectedly, a clue nearly fell on top of them. The wallpaper was sagging off the ceiling. They had always tried to glue it back up, but this time, Sharon asked Brian to tear it down. And as he tore out the front section here, I thought that there was blood on the ceiling, because all you could see was red. And I thought, oh no, what is that? That wasn't blood, but exquisite red flowers painted on the ceiling. It was so incredible. And then it became a sense of, oh my goodness, how are we going to restore this? An artist friend carefully traced over the original art and brought the flower paintings back to life. It was exciting, but also it became like an investigation. A hunt to see if any other ceilings were painted. The problem? How to uncover the paintings without destroying them. The solution? An off-the-wall idea. Brian suggested, well, why don't we try a black light? Oh, my God. <gasps> the glow of the black light helped them see amazing designs hidden under the wallpaper. This is just kind of blew us away. But it still didn't answer the nagging questions. Who painted flowers on the ceiling? And were they connected to the bullet holes outside? Sharon and Brian would learn more when they stumbled upon some old letters. Love letters filled with sweet words between William McCoy, who bought this house in 1847, and his fiancée, Eleanor, who lived in Ohio. Telling her how beautiful it was out here, how, how, that there is civilization out here. I think that Eleanor was frightened to come out to the wild unknown. 
But William tamed the wild unknown. He planted a two-acre flower garden around the house. In the letters, they would always talk about what was blooming. In 1850, the promise of flowers and love won out. Eleanor moved to Independence, Missouri and married William. To keep the feeling that the garden was blooming all year round, William hired an artist to paint flowers on the ceiling. I think that he wanted to treat her as a princess. William himself was a prince of sorts. He served one term as mayor of Independence, Missouri, and he was known as the town diplomat. That came in handy in the early 1860s. That's when Missouri, a border state, became a key battleground in the Civil War. Union and Confederate soldiers duked it out in Independence. Brian and Sharon suspected that's when bullets hit their house. We did additional research and, and learned about the, the skirmishes that, that occurred here. Union soldiers planned to burn Independence, Missouri to the ground, but... William stepped forward and negotiated with the Union soldiers and told them that that there wasn't going to be any problems here in Independence. But then came one problem McCoy couldn't sweet-talk his way out of. He owned the First National Bank of Independence, and one day he had a notorious visitor. In 1867, William McCoy's bank was robbed of $20,000 of cash and gold and silver. The robbers locked McCoy and his employees in the vault. Eleanor was here in the house, was the only person who had the key to get them out. And that's not all. The robbery was blamed on uh, Jesse James and his gang. That's right. Legend has it the infamous Jesse James hit McCoy's bank. The Snyders say the mystery and legends live on inside their home, and they think about the McCoys often. Mr. McCoy could have looked out both these windows and saw pioneer wagons and hopes and dreams and going forward. The Snyders think without the wild stories that took place at their house, it might have taken a little longer for Missouri to settle down. Still ahead, how a dangerous toy and a baby in a bowl explain why she got the house for free. Next on If Walls Could Talk. This summer on HGTV, bring new life to the outside of your home. It's just gorgeous. You'll be amazed at what a little fixing up can do. It looks 100 times better. The result is spectacular. Large projects are easy updates. We've got cool ways to make any house stand out. Is this really our house? Curb Appeal, Tuesdays at 9.30 on HGTV. Next on I Want That Kitchens, get the hottest products that'll warm up the heart of your home. Then design to sell, all next on HGTV. We gave it a 4.6 liter V8 with enhanced horsepower and torque for greater towing capacity. The new seven passenger GL, it's more Mercedes to love. It's time for Grilling with Jimmy. We're grilling up the best burgers ever. And all it takes is the fresh, all natural flavor of Sargento deli style slices. Honey, burgers ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Lou Gentina, Sargento Cheese, and our deli-style slices turn ordinary burgers into Sargento burgers for a taste your audience will love. Sargento, our family's passion is cheese. I love black, but not lint. My cat, I love her. But she sheds. Can anything help keep lint and hair away from my clothes? Bounce dryer sheets can. Watch as lint and hair are attracted to the sock on the left compared to the one dried with bounce. Bounce not only made my clothes soft, it also helped repel lint and hair throughout the day. You gotta see it to believe it. Go online now to enter the Bounce Gotta See It sweepstakes for your chance to win a wardrobe makeover. Hallway. Kitchen. <laughs> Dining room. Here he comes. The right floor makes everybody happy. That's why Lowe's has the widest selection of any national retailer, whether it's tile, hardwood, or carpet. We'll even install it for you. Lowe's, let's build something together. Use your Lowe's card and pay nothing for 12 months on purchases of $299 or more now through May 29th. We gave it over 80 cubic feet of cargo space, so you have room for anything. And everything. Hans? Hans? The new seven-passenger GL. It's more Mercedes to love. 
HGTV is discovering our history while restoring America. For more information on HGTV's partnership with the National Trust for Historic Preservation, visit HGTV.com slash Restore America and learn about the projects going on around the country. Brought to you by Marvin Windows and Doors. When our next homeowner started making discoveries in her house, she wasn't prepared for the strange story that she would uncover. It's a tragic tale that involved a wedding dress, nurse's garb, and a tiny toy cannon. Joyce McNeely still can't believe she owns this 1836 farmhouse in Burlington, Kentucky. How she got it and what she learned about the man who once lived here changed her life forever. It was a, a dream. The man who owned this house, John Caldwell, was Joyce's elderly boss. He lived here with his wife, sister, and... Volumes and volumes of books. There are books that date back in the 1700s. There you know, are just so many rare books. That was puzzling because John was blind. Why would a blind man collect books? John worked to overcome his blindness. He wanted Joyce to reach her potential, too. He encouraged her to go to college. When she graduated, he gave her this family heirloom, an antique emerald and diamond ring. And it didn't end there. They didn't have any heirs, and they wanted to give me their house when they were gone. You know, that's very kind, but why me? I never understood that. Why did the Caldwells pick her? Joyce inherited the house and everything inside. Aunt Hetty Caldwell's piano from the 1800s was still in the living room. John had learned to play it, and Joyce would discover more about her benefactors as she explored the 4,500 square foot home. I find something new whenever I'm in this attic. The attic was filled with trunks and boxes. Everything was labeled in both text and braille. There, Joyce found a doll she thought once belonged to John's sister, some fans, and antique swords. This is his dead mother's reception dress when married in 1907. Wow. John told Joyce his parents bought this house in 1944. As she browsed the bookshelf, Joyce found medical textbooks she was sure once belonged to John's parents. His dad was a doctor, his mom a nurse. I have many, many stories to uncover. I don't think I ever noticed the iris in that bowl, which was his favorite flower. <laughs> wow. This big bowl sitting on the sideboard in the dining room, for example. I never really knew that it had a significance, but now I have that picture of him in it. That's right, it shows baby John sitting in the bowl. John would grow up to become a well-educated man with a variety of interests. He always had a fascination with guns, and he actually taught me how to shoot a gun, which is pretty interesting for you know, a blind person teaching someone how to shoot a gun. Joyce learned that it was this fascination with guns that changed his life forever. He wasn't always blind. In 1927, at the age of 13, he and a couple friends were outside playing with a toy cannon. It was a homemade toy cannon, but it was built to pack a punch. They were putting gunpowder in it, and it exploded. The explosion hit John in the face. And John totally lost his vision. He was in the hospital for days. Remember the antique diamond and emerald ring? His father gave it to his mother uh, while John was recuperating. I think he hoped that the ring would cheer her. And the cannon? It's always been in his library. What kind of man would keep the toy that made him blind? He felt that he put a burden on his family because of his stupid accident, as he would refer to it. So John was determined to change the lives of others. I was worth his time and effort. I was worth that extra mile. And what about all those books? Maybe by the more books you end, the smarter you are. <laughs> you know, he, he was very intelligent. Now Joyce is the caretaker of all those books and this house. She says it's a way to keep John's spirit alive. I'm Mike Siegel. See you next time on If Walls Could Talk. I'm mad, they tell me. Mad! Yeah, well, we'd gag you, too. <laughs> yeah. you gag me and put me in this. Yeah, so what do you think? Is it fit? I don't know who... Yeah, I think it is. It's very comfy, actually. Oh, cool. I feel strangely you, at home. You can get some rest now. <laughs> Thanks.
Up next, the blender every man will love.